Hello and welcome back to the Nerd Melon Show. Go Collect is a website that claims to be making comic book collecting better by giving you all the data you need to stay ahead of the collecting market. The problem is their data is radically incomplete and misleading. We took the top 100 comic book sales since the start of 2021 and compared that to the Go Collect website. Our findings were shocking. So let's hit the intro and get into this report. So I'd like to start things off with a story. I was at a comic show here in Vancouver, British Columbia. I was looking at a graded 9.2 copy of Iron Man 55 for Thanos. As you can see, I've got a couple of copies here. This 4.5 was the one I had as a kid, recently graded. Uh, this 8.5 is one that I purchased as an adult, as an upgrade, but I'm still not happy with it. After all, Thanos is my favorite character and he has been for a long time before the Infinity War movies came out. So I'm talking to this guy at the show who's got a 9.2. Uh, he's asking $3,000 for it. I say, that's way too much. He says, I get my values off Go Collect. So I pull up Nerd Melon on my phone and I said, look, this copy should be going for at least $1,000 less than what you're asking for. He says, I've never heard of Nerd Melon. You can have this copy for $3,000. So I named this guy Gary Go Collect, but it's true Nerd Melon is not an industry standard for fair market values yet, but this interaction is part of the reason why I wanted to make this video. Just a quick heads up before we get going, we are making two of these videos, one for comic books and one for video games. We will be reusing some of the footage in both videos so we don't have to shoot it twice. For example, this next part about the conflict of interest is all duplicated, but for the most part, both videos have their own footage. We feel that Go Collect has become so standard that nobody questions it anymore. Well, we're here to question that, and I am aware that there is a massive conflict of interest here. Uh, NerdMelon.com provides market data so that collectors can calculate a fair market value. Go Collect provides market data so that collectors can calculate fair market value. We do the same thing. But not only that, I realize there is a massive heaping pile of self-promotion to this video, and I'm trying very cautiously not to cross that cringe line, but if it helps, I'd like you to consider one thing. Nerdmelon.com is completely free. We don't charge a cent for our services. It's essentially a hobby website set up by a handful of collectors, and in fact, it costs us money in monthly hosting fees and the hundreds of hours we spend every month verifying auction data. We operate in this manner because we are passionate about collecting. We're not here for the profit. Go Collect, on the other hand, is a for-profit business. They have an accounting department, a payroll department, um, marketing budget, they file income tax returns. Uh, but most of all, they charge for their service. And while some of the employees of Go Collect claim to be collectors themselves, in fact, they refer to themselves on their website as nerds, if the site stopped making income, the site would cease to exist. So providing our opinion on Go Collect is fair game, especially since we have no monetary incentive in doing this video. And since Go Collect positions themselves as the one-stop shop for staying ahead of the collecting market, then we would expect their data to be full and complete. So let's dive in. First, we're going to look at how their data is wholly incomplete. And then we're going to look at how their existing data is misleading. So we looked up the top 100 comic book sales since January 2021, and we used 2021 as the cutoff because we wanted things to be fairly recent. Uh, we also ended in August 2022, that was about a month ago, because we wanted to negate any potential arguments that we didn't give Go Collect enough time to post the data on their website. We also ignored any eBay best offers because there's no way of knowing what the final negotiated price was. And for full transparency, we posted the entire 100 comic books on the nerdmelon.com website, and you can find a link to that in the description below. Of the top 100 selling comic books in the last year and a half, 30 were not on the Go Collect website. Now, if you're thinking 30% is not a very huge number, I must first remind you that you are paying for ultra accuracy here, but also this is 30 of the highest selling comic books in the last year and a half, and in some cases ever, 
and yet Go Collect still missed them. There's a gigantic bullseye on these comic books. Just think how high this number might go if we started looking at the mid-range comic sales, like maybe between a thousand and five thousand dollars, the type of sales that happen multiple times a day that nobody really pays any attention to. So now let's go over some of the huge dollar value auction sales that didn't make it to Go Collect, but before that I want to take a few moments to show you how this all works. If you're not familiar with the Go Collect website, this is how they organize their data. Each comic has its own dedicated page, and this is important so we'll come back to it later. On this page you can then select the grade, then all the auction data for that collectible in that grade are conveniently listed for you in chronological order. This is what we're looking at here. On the right hand side you can see the grade and the sales prices are listed here. The details of the auction that is missing from Go Collect will be displayed up here with the name, grade, and highlighted sales price. This data is taken directly from the Nerd Melon website for which we will display a screenshot in the upper right corner. You'll be able to confirm that the comic is not on Go Collect by checking the sales price up here with the sales listed down below. In all cases today, the sales prices up top will not be displayed on the Go Collect website. For example, this copy of TMNT number one signed by Eastman and Laird is the least expensive on the list with a sales price of 198,000. This is a perfect example because sales values on Go Collect are nowhere near 200,000, making the difference between the upper highlighted number and Go Collect's webpage very noticeable. By the way, the reason for this discrepancy is that Go Collect's sorting algorithm has mislabeled these sales of free comic book day copies as genuine originals. That said, we will not review each and every comic that didn't make Go Collect's website. Instead, let's fast forward now to the top 10 highest value sales and have a look at those. Here's a copy of Captain America number one, first Cap America, graded at CGC 7.0, sold for 325k not on Go Collect. And look at the CGC 9.6 graded Avengers number one that sold for $360,000. Also not on Go Collect. This is another Captain America number one graded at 8.0 sold for $395,000 not on Go Collect. Another AF15, this one high grade at 9.0 that sold for $566,000. A restored copy of Action Comics number one, graded at a 9.4, sold for 575,000. Okay, we're not here to argue these prices, but this comic sold for $130,000 more than the last AF15 on the list, and it was just a few months later, and it's a lower grade. AF15 Mania was strong in late 2021. In any case, this one sold for $690,000, not on GoCollect. Four left on the list, and this is the last one under a million. Here is a graded 8.0 Batman number one that sold for $850,000, not on Go Collect. Massive jump in price to $1,250,000 with this first appearance Batman graded at 6.5, somehow not on Go Collect. These last two are just craziness. Batman number one graded at 8.0, sold for $1.4 million. Do I need to ask how this didn't get on Go Collect? And last but definitely not least, this is the highest selling comic book that is not on Go Collect, and it just happens to be the second highest ever selling comic book. Forget about the date restrictions we put in place. Second highest ever of all time. Action Comics number one, graded at 8.5, first appearance of Superman, sold for $3,250,000, not on Go Collect. So are we now just supposed to believe that Go Collect's data is 100% accurate, even though we know that 30% of the data is missing? Hello, IRS, why are you auditing me? I tell you that my income taxes are full and complete, yet you're saying I'm missing 30% of my income? It's not like we're buying expensive comic books here. This is just income tax. All you have to do is believe my numbers and then there's no audit. Wait a minute, I'm from Canada. Why is the IRS auditing me anyway? The problem with data mining websites like GoCollect and well, yes, Nerd Melon is affected by this as well, is that it's impossible to be accurate with 100% of the data. This is because there are tens of thousands of auctions being closed every single day, and it would be way too labor intensive for any one person or even group of people to verify all that data. So we use computer algorithms to help us sort through all that data. Yet as we'll see next, computer algorithms pose their own set of problems. 
So let's look at a few examples. The listing here says it's graded at CGC 2.5, but the auction is for a raw comic. There's no mention in the auction title that this is a green qualified label. And in this case, there is no mention of a grade at all. Remember those signed TMNT comics we talked about earlier? This is a prime example of where a sorting algorithm can fail. These three comics were mislabeled as originals by GoCollect's algorithm. And remember that GoCollect provides various calculations based on these flawed numbers, such as average sales in the last month, quarter, or year. Any calculations based on this data will be radically incorrect and misleading. These examples all illustrate how easy it is to confuse a computer algorithm, and as we'll see next, this problem is exacerbated with improper data organization. As we've seen previously, GoCollect organizes their data by giving each and every collectible its own dedicated page. Uh, other popular websites like PriceCharting and GamesValueNow.com use the same basic strategy. It is nice and convenient for the user, but it means that your algorithm has to be 100% accurate, otherwise the data on that page is going to be flawed or missing completely. Incidentally, NerdMelon doesn't have this issue because we don't have dedicated pages for each collectible. When you search our database, you search every record in our database, and at the time of recording, that's about 2.6 million records. You can search by date or date range, grade or grade range. Um, you can search from any of the 110 different third-party grading companies we have in our database. The results may contain junk, which you are free to ignore. The point is, we don't spoon-feed you the data. You get to choose what's important to you and what's not important. And speaking of third-party grading companies, this is another beef we have with GoCollect and every other website like this. All you get are the two big companies, CGC and CBCS. This is an extremely outdated practice. Some of these other third-party grading companies have gained huge respect in the collecting industry, and ignoring them means you're missing out on a giant chunk of the auction data out there. Just look at these PGX graded comics and tell me that they wouldn't matter in a fair market value calculation. Tales of Suspense, number 39, first Iron Man, $12,250. Daredevil number one, first Daredevil and signed by Stan Lee, $40,000. Fantastic Four, number five, the first appearance of our previous cameraman on this show, Dr. Doom, $60,000. But I know PGX gets a bad rap all the time, so if that's not your cup of tea, then how about these examples? Here's another Daredevil number one, also signed by Stan Lee, graded by the Expert Grading System. It's a lower grade, but still sold for $3,000. Or how about this Halo graded Incredible Hulk number 181, first Wolverine? That sold for over $12,000. None of these comics are on GoCollect because of their outdated belief that CGC and CBCS are the only players out there. Now, yeah, maybe you don't consider a PGX 9.8 the equivalent to a CGC 9.8. Whatever, it doesn't matter. The data shouldn't be hidden from you. It should be there so you can make your own decision on it. And it's not just the graded books either. GoCollect doesn't have any data on raw comic sales. So right there, you're missing about 45% of the market. Take a look at these high value raw sales and then tell me they don't mean anything to you. Here we have the first issue of the historic Weird Tales pulp from 1923, sold for $25,000. First issue of Doc Savage from 1933, sold for $28,800. And then finally, All Story October issue from 1912. This is the first appearance of Tarzan, sold for $48,000. The reason why we decided to use these particular sale of raw comic books is yes, one, because of their dollar value, but also because they're all super cool and super rare comic books. You don't get a whole lot of sales like this every year, and to lose this data because they're not graded just seemed like a shame to us. Our feelings aside, the fact that Go Collects data does not include data on raw sales just leads to the misleading nature of their product. Making collecting better. That's GoCollect's slogan. It's right up there on their homepage. However, we think it should read something different. We think it should say, making collectors lazy. In their efforts to make collecting better, sites like GoCollect have spoon-fed information to collectors based on misleading and flawed data. Collectors have gotten used to this pampering, and so they no longer feel the need to do their own research, instead declaring sites like GoCollect to be full and complete. 
even though they may know deep down inside that it's not. Uh, the cycle continues. Sellers quote, go collect, buyers buy based on that price, rinse and repeat until it becomes truth. Gary Go Collect, the story from earlier on, was very much a pampered collector in this regard. For a site that claims they are making collecting better, I have my doubts about Go Collect. They are clearly missing huge chunks of data, and the data that they have is suspect. Any calculations based on this data should be scrutinized. If not, it should be outright rejected. Unfortunately, the sheer number of auction sales that close every day make it difficult for any website to report accurately on the data. The key, in our opinion, is to provide a full and complete record of all of the data, regardless of whether or not it fits your algorithm. Ultimately, today, we would like two things. One, that GoCollect doesn't sue us. This is our opinion, people. And two, Next time that you meet a Gary Go Collect at the comic show, you have some fodder to throw back in their face. Anyway, that's all for today. Thank you very much and see you on the next episode of the Nerd Melon Show.